Hi, this is Oncology for Medical Students, and this section of videos on cancer diagnosis. What I want to talk about in this video is the way in which we go about diagnosing cancer. So, as we mentioned in the previous video, clinical features of cancers are a number of symptoms that might lead a doctor to be concerned that a patient has cancer. In some other cases, suspicious results in screening tests in people who don't have symptoms may also lead to a concern. In both of these scenarios, the doctor will then order further tests. These are most likely to be some sort of imaging, an X-ray, CT, MRI, ultrasound. The choice of the test depends partly on the type of cancer that's suspected, which would be down to which symptoms are present. If something suspicious is seen on the scan, something that looks like a tumour. We then need to get a tissue sample in order to make a tissue diagnosis of cancer. If it does unfortunately confirm that there is a cancer, we then need to go on to stage the cancer. We'll go into this in more detail as we go along. So, in this example, we have a 60-year-old gentleman who has a 45-year history of smoking. He comes to see his GP because he's been coughing for six weeks. He's also noticed that he's been coughing up a small amount of blood. When the doctor asks him some more questions, it turns out he's lost over a stone of weight in the last six months. Given his smoking history, age and symptoms, the GP's worried about this man's risk of lung cancer. He asks for a chest x-ray, which shows this. Worried about this mass that he's seen on the x-ray, he refers the patient to a respiratory consultant on the two-week rule, which is an urgent suspected cancer referral system in the UK. In order to better visualise the mass, the respiratory consultant asks for a CT scan. The results are worrying, but even at this point we still haven't actually confirmed that he has a cancer. To do this, we need to get a sample of the suspicious looking tissue. The most common way of getting this in the case of lung masses is by an endoscope, which is a camera, to have a look at the lungs and then take a, a tissue sample called a biopsy of anything that looks abnormal. This procedure is called a bronchoscopy. The sample which is taken is then sent to the lab where a specialist doctor called a histopathologist looks at the sample to see if there are any cancer cells present. Unfortunately, in this gentleman's case, the histopathologist has confirmed that he has a squamous cell carcinoma, a type of cancer, in his left lung. Now the cancer has been confirmed, the respiratory doctor needs to think about the treatment he needs to give the patient. The treatment a patient receives is determined by a number of factors. Probably the most important determining factor is usually the stage of the cancer. This means how large the main tumour or the primary tumour is, whether it invades other structures around it, whether it's spread to lymph nodes or even formed other tumours in different parts of the body known as metastases. In this example we can see some liver metastases on the right hand side of the second CT scan which are a bit darker than the rest of the liver. These, the stage normally determines whether localised treatments, namely surgery and radiotherapy, would be useful. Unfortunately, once the cancer is spread, localised treatments can't cure the cancer and are only really used if they might have an effect on relieving the patient's symptoms. The stage of the cancer is normally determined by imaging. A specialist doctor called a radiologist looks at the images to look at the extent of the primary tumour and whether there is any evidence of spread. The type of cancer it is, as in the precise tissue diagnosis, can also determine how it might respond to different types of treatment. For example, some types of cancer might benefit more than others from radiotherapy, 
and some cancers that have specific receptors might benefit from targeted hormonal or biological therapies. Histopathologists can look under the microscope and give the cells a histological diagnosis. They can grade the cancer on the basis of a number of criteria which we'll go into later. And the receptor status, whether the cells are expressing or whether they have certain types of receptors. Another thing that the physicians have to consider is the functional status of the patient. Are they well enough to go through with surgery, radiotherapy or chemotherapy or combinations of these different treatments? The functional status is often um, expressed in the terms of something called the performance status, which is on a scale of zero to four, with four being um, the worst and zero being perfectly normally functioning. What normally happens next is a big meeting between all the clinicians that are involved in the care in which they can all have an input to decide what is best to do next. These meetings are known as multidisciplinary team meetings or MDTs. Usually the people who make up the MDT are the following. We have a physician, in this case it's a respiratory physician who normally carried out the initial investigations. Um, for instance, a respiratory physician is likely to be the person who carried out the bronchoscopy. We have the radiologist who can look at the scan results and determine the stage of the cancer. We have a histopathologist who can determine the histological diagnosis, grade and receptor status. And then we have the oncologist. In the UK, oncologists are, tend to be split into two different camps. On one hand, we have medical oncologists who specialise in chemotherapy, hormone treatment and biological therapy. Then we also have another specialty known as clinical oncology. Clinical oncologists, on top of giving uh, or making decisions about chemotherapy and some other treatments, also specialise in radiotherapy. We also have surgeons. So the surgeons are the people who will um, cut out tumours or if uh, there are special tr um, biopsy procedures that need to be taken um, because tumour tissue is particularly hard to get hold of, the, they can have an input with regards to this. Last but not least, we have specialist nurses. Specialist nurses tend to have expert specific knowledge in particular areas of cancer. So we ha will have lung cancer specialist nurses or um, GI specialist cancer nurses. They're involved heavily in the follow-up and monitoring of patients and they're often the people who actually know the most about the patients themselves. So in summary, in the diagnosis of cancer, patients will first go through initial tests and imaging, which might include X-ray, CT, MRI, ultrasound. We then need to get a tissue diagnosis. So this is from a biopsy. So we take a piece of the tissue and then a histopathologist looks under a microscope to determine the type of tumor it is, the grade and the receptor status. Once the cancer has been confirmed, then we have to go on to staging, which might involve some more imaging to determine exactly the extent of the cancer. Thanks for listening. I hope you found this useful. Cheers.